<laughs> Can I sit there? Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, mwah. Where the heck have I been? <laughs> I've had a handful of you guys reaching out asking if I'm okay, when my next video is, why I'm not posting on YouTube anymore, um, that you're really missing your Aquila fix, and that's why I'm making this video. This last month hasn't exactly gone as planned, and I think it's, it's pretty clear that with this lifestyle, it's hard for anything to go as planned, even just in life. Plans don't work all the time. So just for the logistical aspect of where I've been, in January, I went to Peru. Uh, the last video you guys watched was me leaving the property. There was a shipping container that was brought to the property. Really exciting part of the future. And Chris and I left. One of the reasons why we left, well, we were sick of winter. That's one of the reasons. And the second reason is we needed to get closer to Vegas because I was flying out of Vegas to spend most of January in Peru. This was a trip that had been planned for almost a year in advance. Um, the big catalyst to the Peru trip was me feeling really inspired to explore the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> so I booked a trip, I booked an expedition to the Amazon rainforest and it was a herpetology trip. And herpetology is snakes, amphibians, reptiles, searching for those kind of animals, adding to the species list of that area. So that is kind of what the trip revolved around. So I went to Peru. I flew into Puerto Maldonado on, what was it, first week of, first week of Peru, first week of January. I spent about eight days in that area, and then I flew into Cusco. My, one of my best friends, Courtney, met me in Cusco, and we trekked to Machu Picchu. We did a self-guided five-day trek through the mountains, um, staying at little villages along the way. This was without a guide. It was like the coolest adventure. It was so amazing. Very, very neat parts of that trek. Um, I would almost say that experience was cooler than actually like seeing Machu Picchu, but that had been on my list for a long time and I wanted to to do that. When in Peru, you know, you could go see Machu Picchu. <sighs> really cool little side note about this. Um, the day that we were in Machu Picchu, there were strikes starting. There were strikes that were beginning in protest of the government privatizing Machu Picchu tickets. Very interesting. And we were a little on edge, but overall felt pretty safe but the day we left was the day that they were starting. If it had been, you know, if we had gone in any other day after that, we wouldn't have been able to get out probably. And if we had planned seeing Machu Picchu any day after that, we wouldn't have even got in. So our timing was like impeccable, it was amazing. And I returned to the States after about three weeks in Peru feeling incredibly inspired, so grounded. Um, if I didn't have Aquila, which my life revolves around Aquila, she is my everything. And so I would never do this, but if she was not in my life, I would have booked Chris a one-way ticket and I would have stayed in South America for four months six months I don't know <laughs> um, being away from her for three weeks was really really hard I knew that she was in obviously like the best hands with Chris and she was with Kobuk her best brother and so yeah it was really hard being away from her but I also knew that if it wasn't for her I would have just stayed in South America it it's probably one of my favorite countries but like I mentioned I returned from Peru feeling um, like I was entering and inspired to be like the best, the best, most like fulfilled, grounded person that I could be. I, I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes, um, 
I feel like there's not great vocabulary for the things that you experience in life. <laughs> and I just, there was a lot of power to, to what I felt. And some of that had to do with the people that I met over there. And some of the uh, epiphanies, I guess, that you can have when traveling overseas. And maybe I'll dive into that a little bit. This is also one of the reasons why I haven't released videos about Peru yet. Because I'm trying so hard to emulate the emotions that I really felt and the experiences that were so powerful for me uh, through the videos. Because I want to, I want to capture that through the videos. And, and so the, the edits are uh, taking much longer than just what a simple like weekly vlog would, would be. <laughs> And I mentioned this in an upcoming vlog, actually. But one of the things that really stuck with me, and there wasn't one particular piece of being in Peru or one particular thing that happened, but over the course of those three weeks, it just really began to, to like settle in me that there's this knowing of all we have, like all we have really control over in this life is what we choose to do with our time and what we choose to do with our health. And even in some cases, time and health, we don't have those in our control, you know, depending on our situations and um, what we were born into or what we were born with. You know, like there's a lot of different things in those realms too that maybe aren't in our control. But broadly speaking, time and health are the only things that we have um, in, that, we are, that we are in control of. There was quite a shock for me coming back to the US, and this is not the first time that it happened. This is like a pretty normal thing. It's a pretty common thing. A lot of people will talk about the shock the first time or two they head overseas, like culture shock essentially. And I always have the most culture shock when returning to the US. And that definitely threw me into a funk. I was in a bit of a funk. I think some of that is due to, you know, I was living out of a small backpack for three weeks, totally immersed in nature, essentially sleeping, exposed to the outdoors. Not, not unsimilar to what I do here, but, you know, small villages, people that are working really hard for the bare minimum, but also super kind and welcoming and lovely eating very simply, very clean, because resources are minimal. You know, and then, and then the shock was coming back to a country that is pretty obsessed with excess and immediate comfort and production and lack of connection to what I guess I believe we're, we're wired to, to be. So there was a bit of a shock there coming back. And like I mentioned, that threw me into a little bit of a funk. It's still some of my creativity in a way. And when your work depends on your creativity, that can be a bit of a um, interesting hill to climb, you know? So finding ways to kind of get back into that creative flow and, uh, I did so by, you know, listening to a lot of podcasts and creating a really beautiful, I, I, I want to say routine, but I think it's more of a rhythm in my life because routine, I think, is a bit more uh, rigid than what I do. It's more of a rhythm. Some of that will be all talked about in an upcoming vlog of me settling back into the U.S. It's um, all edited. I'm just waiting to get it out to you guys. I wanted to get this video out first. So there has not been a lack of content. It's just the work has been a bit deeper as in it's taking me more time because I care about these edits and they're a little bit longer videos. And something I'm working on is really creating for myself because I can get a bit of anxiety or feel a bit of pressure when I'm like, oh, I need to create these specific videos because this is what people want rather than focusing on like this is what I want to create because this is what is inspiring to me and this is this is how I feel the video should flow 
and the words that I want to use. And so that's what I'm working on right now. I also, so that little bit of a funk, like culture shock happened returning to the U.S. I think I might put this on my podcast. If you guys would rather listen to this podcast form instead of watching this, feel free to head over to Spotify. <laughs> Speaking of that, quick little note, sidetrack. Um, Chris and I are going to start taking our podcast a bit more seriously, and it will be on The Morning Nomad on Spotify or wherever you listen to, to your podcasts. A few years ago, I started a podcast. It was super chill, super fun. It's going to remain super chill and super fun, but we're going to take like um, take it a bit more seriously, do bi-weekly, longer form um, topic specific podcast together. Uh, so yeah, head over to the morning nomad if you like podcasts. Um, okay. Yeah. So I had that week of a weird little funk and then a family member started to decline. We've known that she was declining a bit and, um, we have all been able to mentally prepare, but she did pass um, it was my grandmother. My grandmother passed a week and a half ago now. So I did end up flying home for four or five days. I think it was four days to be with family. And during that time, I ended up not working just so I could bask in, um, all of us being together again. It's pretty rare where all of my brothers and me and my, my mom were all together. So that push some videos back a little bit and I'm okay with that because it feel feels really important then I had already before before that happened before I needed to get a last minute flight and go home and leave Aquila again uh, and luckily Chris stayed back to watch her otherwise he would have absolutely came home with me um, to be with family as well but he took on Aquila duty again um, I had agreed to go and visit some college friends the following week. I had already booked that flight. And so I had, you know, this really big chunk of time being away from Aquila and being overseas. That felt incredibly good and incredibly inspiring. And I, I, guys, I got the most beautiful footage. Like, I, these videos are, I think, these videos are just so cool. I love them. And then family stuff happened which encouraged me to pick up my stuff again I hadn't really even fully unpacked from Peru at that point picked my stuff up again flew to family came back had three days here picked my stuff up again drove to Vegas flew out to Indiana to be with some friends for a short weekend so long story short there's been a lot of travel a chunk of it um, unplanned along with some like heavy emotional stuff but also really important emotional stuff I'm learning the older that I get is the importance of like leaning into that leaning into that sensitivity and leading into that emotion and leaning into the discomfort and the things that I'm learning and taking my time to listen to myself throughout that and all of that is why there has not been a video out for a while however there are two Peru videos, one uh, like morning routine, morning rhythm video. All of those will be coming out in, over the course of like two weeks. So there were no videos for a while and I'm going to bombard you with my videos. And that's just the way it goes. So today is the first day where I feel like I am settled. I returned. I flew back yesterday and... Now, I just get to, like, live life. <laughs> and that feels, I feel, right now, today, I told Chris this morning as I was working, I was editing um, one of the Trek videos, and I said, this, t right now, I have felt the best that I've felt since returning from Peru. Like, I just feel like I'm back with my people, I'm back with my girl, I'm back in the desert, I'm back with friends who are so wonderful and aligned with who I am. Um, I just feel really good right now, which also makes it a lot easier for me to put together um, videos that I love, which is happening. And I'm really, really excited to get them out to you guys. 
We are currently outside of a town. It's a city. It's not a town. <laughs> We're currently outside of a city that I lived in about, um, oh, I don't know, four years ago now, three years ago, four years ago. And I had not been back here for two years. And there's just a lot of history here. There's a lot of things I love to do here. There's a lot of people I love here. And it's really fun to have Chris here with me because we got to explore the city a little bit. And there's this very beautiful public land right outside of the city. So one of the things that Chris and I are deciding to do is to stay here for another month to really take advantage of the things in the city. And I can imagine some of you are like, Linnea, you're gonna stay outside of a city for over a month? Who are you? I know, it's crazy, but it feels really good right now. One of the things that feels so good about it is the gym. So we got a gym membership for a month. And um, after, or before Peru, Chris and I were on the property for a while. And that was an extremely stressful time. It was also amazing and uh, I, I'm so proud of everything that happened during that time. And it was very productive, but it was also very cold. We weren't very active. And I was so focused on many different things outside of my health. And that's typically not like me. And so now we have this access to a gym and it feels amazing to be not even 10 minutes away. We can still be out here, like this is where we are, it's beautiful. And drive into town and go to a gym, which is really like jump-starting my strength again um, because I hadn't really been lifting. Same with Chris. And both of us are doing things that we have wanted to do for a while and never had access to. One of the things is jujitsu. So Chris started jujitsu now maybe like two or three weeks ago. And I started pottery. <laughs> and I have loved it. There is a very cute pottery studio and they offer studio hours. And um, yeah, one of my goals is to be skilled enough later on in life where I can um, throw all of our own plates and bowls and cups and all that. So I'm starting now and it's felt really great to just sit down and be creative and have the space to do that. And it just happens that it's in town. What? You don't have to sit here if you don't want to. Um, and then the second thing is because we do have a limited time here. So typically Chris and I have like loose plans for, okay, how long do we want to stay in this area? And we know, or I know, I think it could be different for Chris, but for me, I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to be here for a month. I'm going to really take advantage of the things that I'm enjoying about being near a city that has, you know, things more than just like a single restaurant. <laughs> uh, I'm really going to take advantage of it and I'm going to love it and I'm going to bask in it because in a month we're going to be back out in the middle of nowhere and not have access to that. So kind of having the mindset of like I have limited time here so I'm going to take advantage of all of it has been a, a great way for me to be okay being so close to a city. I guess today kind of starts the the uh, returning to more videos here for you guys. I think too sometimes um, just to add to this for full transparency um, I have felt, when I was in Peru, because I wasn't posting, because I was just filming, I had felt so amazing um, not having a bunch of input from outside eyes. I think that I enjoyed it so much that I was weary of posting a video when I got back immediately. Because I just had this um, this freedom and this lack of anxiety and this lack of uh, like mm, looming judgment from the outside world by not putting myself out there and it's interesting to hear things from people 
who are really rude or really mean on the internet saying that, you know, by putting myself out there, I'm, I'm asking for it. And I, or that I signed up for it. And I don't think that that's true. I don't think that um, anybody in, in any career or job is looking for or asking for um, hate or things that could cause a struggle in the mental health realm. I think it'd be cool, and I'll do this too, for those of you that love certain creators, find their page and leave a really kind comment on one of their videos um, and just send them some love because almost anybody that, that creates something for um, the world, but anything that allows people to comment on their work are, are going to get a lot of judgment and a lot of hate. And um, we're not wired for that. We're not wired to have, you know, hundreds of people telling us what we're doing wrong or that making assumptions of who we are as people or how we got here. And so, yeah, if you, you know, have creators that you really care about, just take like two seconds and go send them some love and write a kind comment because they are putting in a lot of work and, you know, risking that to connect with you. That's all. <laughs> I do wish that YouTube had like their story feature still because other than making a video like this, it's hard to connect and share uh, like quick information with everybody on YouTube. That's, I typically do that over on Instagram. So if you are like curious where I am, I'm most active on Instagram because it's so easy to just share bits and pieces of life throughout the day. So um, that would be the best way if you're, you know, needing to know what's going on or where I am. I share a lot there. Hi, babe. Okay. Hi. What are you doing? I'm doing a Where I've Been video. Yeah. I gotta finish up this video. I gotta finish up this video. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mwah. I want to hang out with her. You want to come lay down? Here. Come back. Come. We'll swap. Okay. <laughs> also, kind of along those similar lines, um, I have started a newsletter. I started it this year in 2024, and it's a monthly newsletter, and it kind of just goes through all of the different aspects of life. It kind of changes up the theme every week. And that is a really great way to have all the information in one place. I will make sure to put the newsletter link, sign up. It's really easy. It's free. It's literally just you sign up for it and get information and a, an update from me every month. So I'll put that link below if you want to sign up for that. But I have missed you. And this week I'll be releasing minimum of one video, potentially two videos. And I hope you all really enjoy the content from Peru. And stick around because the rest of the spring will be spent in beautiful southern Utah exploring and adventuring and creating. And then back to the property for trees and a shipping container transformation and whatever else I may have time for. One last thing. If there are topics that you really want Chris and I to dive into, anything from our lifestyle to our relationship to whatever, feel free to put in the comments and we're going to start creating a, a comprehensive list of different topics that we can touch on for podcasts. All right. Love you all. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.